Legends of the Saints, The Nutty Confessor, by John Wateczko, read by Elizabeth Sines. The wind burst open the doors of the volunteer soup kitchen as Lara struggled to close them behind her. The young woman had just finished her shift and was beginning her walk to church. Flower petals fluttered over Lara's feet, and the scent of fresh fruits and vegetables filled the air as she strolled past the marketplace. Morning, Lara, the proprietor of the market called out. Hi, Stefano. How's the family? They're wonderful. Although, Elena's mother was in this weekend, and I don't need to tell you how my wife gets when her mother's around. No, you don't, Lara laughed. Do you know if her mother's still... Oh, yes, she does, Stefano said. And between you and me, I think it's only gotten worse. Really? Stefano nodded his head. But I'm not supposed to say anything, he continued. That's just something within the family. Anyway, how are you? What are you up to? On my way to weekly confession. That's wonderful. This is the first weekend with the new priest, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Have you heard anything about him? Well, I don't know how true this is, but Marco said he heard that the new priest doesn't eat meat, which is a real shame because you know I sell the best meat in town. No lie there. You know, someone told me that the new priest is as cold and mean as Father Dante. Oh, no, Stefano shook his head. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out, Lara said, and continued her stroll to San Mateo Church as the whirling wind picked up. She entered the front of the church, genuflected, and made her way to the back where about a dozen parishioners were already waiting for confession. The church was silent, except for the occasional creaking of the confessional door, which Lara often used as part of her pre-confession meditation. Yet there was another sound, a new and unexpected sound, that reverberated through the church. Invariably, by the end of each confession, Lara heard the parishioner laugh. Not a chuckle, not a quiet laugh, a full-on from the stomach guffaw. This was not the reaction she expected to the new priest whom one of her friends had described as dark and dour. Finally, it was Lotta's turn. She entered the booth, closed the door, and knelt down, when a third sound broke the silence. Before she could make the sign of the cross, the priest's stomach growled from behind the confessional screen. Oh, I beg your pardon, the priest laughed. I'm still adjusting to this parish's schedule. I'm Father Felipe Neri, by the way. Welcome to San Mateo's, Father, Lara said. Thank you, he smiled. Now please, go on. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Lara made the sign of the cross. That's what the last guy said. Father Felipe chuckled as he bowed his head and closed his eyes to receive the woman's confession. Um, yes, well, Lara started. I don't always pray as I should. Sometimes I yell at my children, and I occasionally lie to my mother-in-law, but I'm really trying to do better with that. I see. I see. Is, the priest's stomach interjected, is there anything else? Lara thought for a moment. She had never been asked that before. Normally, she said the same confession each week and never considered adding anything new. Well, actually, it's probably not a big deal, but I often indulge in a little playful gossip. There is a lot going on in that sentence. Father Felipe leaned back in his chair. You say you do it often, but only a little. Playful is very subjective. And what makes you think that it's not a big deal? Because it's not hurting anybody. All actions have consequences. How do you know you're not hurting anyone? I don't know, I suppose, but it's all in fun. Nobody takes it too seriously. Quiet, you, the priest scolded. Excuse me? Lotta said. Oh, not you. Sorry, I'm reprimanding my gastrointestinal nuisance. He patted his stomach as it grumbled again. Tell me this, Father Felipe continued. Would you share gossip about a person with that person? Would you say to them, 
Yeah, I told so-and-so that you this and that. Do you think they would find that very fun? That's not what gossiping is. Lotta was becoming flustered. Anyway, I only brought it up because, even if it's not the biggest problem in the world, I do think it's a small vice that I should maybe avoid. We certainly agree on that point, Father Felipe smiled. For your penance, I... The priest's stomach gurgled. I need you to go to market, buy a large chicken, and bring it here. Lotta almost laughed out loud. You... you want me to... Go get a chicken, yes. Uh, sure, of course, Father. Will that be all for today? She felt as if she was taking a restaurant order. Yes, that will be all, he said, followed by another low tummy rumble. Lotta said her final prayers, made the sign of the cross, and thanked the priest. When she opened the confessional door, Father Felipe called out to her. Actually, there is one more thing. On your way back, pluck the feathers from the chicken. This stopped Lotta in her tracks. She was about to ask, are you serious? But his face told her that he was completely serious. I guess he wants to eat that thing as soon as possible, she thought as she exited the confessional. Lotta ventured back to the now bustling market. Gossip and rumors drifted through the air from one person to the next and she wanted nothing more than to join in on the fun. But having just left confession, she was doing her best to avoid the temptation. She kept her head down and hovered over the poultry selection. How was the new priest? Stefano asked, startling Lotta. Oh, n nice. Unusual. But perhaps it's too early to make a judgment. I don't really know him yet, you know? She returned her attention to the poultry. I'm looking for a nice chicken. Could you help me pick one out? Sure thing. Hey, speaking of chicken, did you hear about Sophia's daughter? Stefano handed Lotta a plump bird. No, I didn't. Did she finally... A actually, Stefano, I don't have time for that today. I need to get this back to the new priest. Lotta paid Stefano for the chicken. Oh, this is for the priest, he nodded. So he's not a vegetarian. Or he is, and that's why he has you doing his shopping, so he doesn't get caught. Do you think he's cheating on a vow of poverty or something? I, I don't want to speculate, Lotta shrugged. Oh, we're just having a bit of fun, aren't we? Stefano laughed. Yeah, I suppose. We'll talk later. Thanks for the chicken. Lotta walked only a few feet out of the cloud of gossip when she recalled Father Felipe's ridiculous request. On your way back, pluck the feathers. I can't do that, she thought. I'll look like a fool. But it was her penance, and she wanted to complete a proper confession. So pluck went the first feather, and pluck went the second. And with every few steps, Lara plucked a feather that was caught up by the wind and blown through the town. Back at San Mateo's, the final parishioner exited the confessional. Father Felipe removed the stole from his shoulders, kissed it, and folded it. He closed his prayer book and put out the light. As he walked to the back exit of the church, a whispered yell came from the front. Father, wait, a familiar voice called. Father Felipe looked around and smiled as he saw Lara scurrying down the aisle with a chicken in her arms. Let's talk outside, he suggested. Outside the church doors, Lara handed Father Felipe the de-feathered bird. Absolutely beautiful, the priest's stomach growled louder than ever. Here, let me pay you for it. No, Father, I can't accept that, she insisted. I'm blessed to be able to do this kindness for you. And I'm blessed with a delicious-looking chicken. Thank you very much. Lara bowed her head and turned around to leave. One final thing, Father Felipe called. What is it, Father? I need you to... The priest's stomach interrupted. I need you to go back through town and pick up all of the feathers you plucked from this chicken. Are, are you serious? Father Felipe chuckled. It's no big deal, is it? 
Of course it is. It's the windiest day of the year. It would be impossible for me to find all of those feathers now that they've been blown here, there, and everywhere. So is it too with gossip, Felipe smiled. As soon as you put gossip into the world, you have no control over it. You can't stop it. You can't put it back. It will go wherever the wind takes it. Stunned, Lara finally realized why this peculiar priest made her penance a chicken. Our words, like our actions, produce consequences that we may never be aware of, the priest continued so we must be aware of what we say and do and always try to be our best. Lara gave a solemn nod of understanding and walked away. One final, final thing, Father Felipe called out again. Lara slowly turned around and saw Father Felipe's gigantic grin. Would you like to join me for a chicken dinner? He asked, and Lara burst into laughter. A production of We Are One Body Audio Theatre.